As of the last market close on Friday, October 10, 2025, since we are currently in a weekend session, shares of Nuburu Inc. trading under the ticker symbol BURU closed at $0.48, marking an intraday gain of 0.013, or 2.88%. Now, on the surface, a nearly 3% pop for a sub-dollar stock might barely register as a blip. The common expectation for a name like Nuburo is that it's just another forgotten microcap, bouncing around on low volume, a playground for day traders, and nothing more. The narrative suggests a company struggling for relevance after a disastrous post-SPAC performance. But that reality, the one the market seems to have priced in, might be missing a critical detail about the physics of light and its application in the next wave of industrial manufacturing. The expectation is a penny stock gamble. The reality is a company holding a technological key to solving one of the biggest bottlenecks in electric vehicle battery production and advanced electronics fabrication. The disconnect between these two points is where the real story is. Let's first address the prevailing market sentiment. Most investors who come across Nuburo likely see the stock chart and immediately dismiss it. It's a story we've seen countless times, especially with companies that came public via SPAC. A grand vision, promising projections, and then a brutal collision with the realities of cash burn, slow customer adoption, and a challenging macroeconomic environment. It's easy to lump it in with the speculative froth that has since evaporated. Many retail traders using platforms like the Robinhood app or SoFi Invest might see the low price and think it's a cheap lottery ticket, while more sophisticated investors managing their portfolios through Fidelity or Interactive brokers would likely screen it out based on market cap and profitability metrics alone. The consensus is that the risk is simply too high, the path to profitability too uncertain. This is the story told by the price, a descent from its initial debut to under 50 cents. But this narrative, while factually accurate in its historical description, is dangerously incomplete. It focuses solely on the stock's past without properly weighting the foundational technology's future potential. The deeper reality requires us to look beyond the ticker and into the lab. Newborough's entire business is built on high-power blue laser technology. To the average person, that sounds niche, perhaps even inconsequential. But in the world of advanced manufacturing, it's a significant development. For decades, the industry standard has been the infrared laser. It's powerful, reliable, and works well for many materials. However, it has a glaring weakness when it comes to highly reflective metals like copper and gold. Infrared light essentially bounces off these materials, leading to inefficient, messy, and often weak welds. This is a massive problem for industries that are becoming increasingly dependent on copper, namely the electric electric vehicle industry. EV battery packs contain a substantial amount of copper, used in everything from the bus bars to the foil connectors, and welding it efficiently is a major manufacturing hurdle. This is where Nuburo's blue laser enters the picture. The shorter wavelength of blue light is absorbed by copper with incredible efficiency, up to 20 times more effectively than infrared. This results in faster, stronger, spatter-free welds, a quality that is not just a minor improvement, but a fundamental enhancement to the manufacturing process. The market sees a struggling company. The engineers at major automotive and electronics firms see a potential solution to a physics problem that has been costing them time and yield. This isn't just theory, it's an application that is being actively explored and adopted, albeit slower than initial projections had hoped. Looking at the recent trading activity, that 2.88% move, while small, occurred on volume that was slightly above its daily average. It's not a massive spike, but it's not silent either. This suggests that there's a small but persistent base of buyers who are accumulating shares at these depressed levels. We aren't talking about major fidelity mutual funds establishing a new core position, but we could be seeing smaller, specialized tech funds or high net worth individuals 
individuals who understand the underlying science taking a calculated risk. It's the kind of subtle activity that often precedes a more significant shift in sentiment. For those using advanced tools on platforms like Interactive Brokers Trading, you can see the order flow has been slowly firming up, with the bid-ask spread narrowing in recent sessions. This isn't the chaotic, retail-driven frenzy you might see in a meme stock, it's more methodical. This is a critical distinction. The stock isn't being pumped, it appears to be finding a floor based on a small group of investors who believe the technological value proposition outweighs the financial risks. This contrasts sharply with the volatility you might see in a heavily traded name like Tesla stock or Nvidia stock. But for a microcap, this quiet accumulation can be a far more bullish signal. The company's last earnings call was a mixed bag, which is typical for a development stage firm. Revenue is growing but remains small, and cash burn is still a primary concern. Management was candid about the long sales cycles for their industrial systems. A manufacturer doesn't just swap out a multi-million dollar production line overnight. It requires testing, validation, and a significant capital expenditure commitment. This is the headwind that has kept the stock price suppressed. However, they also highlighted progress in their joint development agreements and an expansion of their patent portfolio. These are the building blocks that don't immediately show up in quarterly revenue, but are essential for long-term defensibility. The market, fixated on immediate profitability, has largely ignored these developments. It's a classic case of short-term sentiment obscuring long-term technological maturation. An investor looking for quick gains on a Robinhood stock trading account will be disappointed here. The thesis for Nubero is one that requires patience and a deep appreciation for the industrial adoption cycle. So, what does Nubero actually do? They design, manufacture, and sell industrial-grade blue lasers. Their flagship product is a compact, high-power laser system that can be integrated into existing manufacturing robotics and assembly lines. Their business model is primarily direct sales of these systems to end users in key verticals, e-mobility, consumer electronics, and aerospace. Think about the intricate welding required inside an Apple stock iPhone or the complex battery arrays in a modern EV. These are the applications where precision and material compatibility are absolutely critical. Nubero is not just selling a piece of hardware, they are selling a manufacturing capability that was previously difficult or impossible to achieve at scale. Their past performance since coming public has been undeniably poor, reflecting the immense challenge of commercializing a new hardware technology. They've had to raise capital, leading to dilution, and their revenue growth hasn't yet been steep enough to offset their operational expenses. This financial reality is the anchor weighing down the stock. The company has a technological moat, but it's operating on a finite runway of cash, creating a tense race against time. Looking ahead, the future outlook for Nubero presents two starkly different paths, creating the core tension for any potential investment. The bull case hinges on a single, transformative catalyst, a large-scale order from a major automotive OEM or a Tier 1 battery manufacturer. An announcement that a company like Panasonic, LG Chem, or even Tesla itself has chosen to integrate Nubero's blue laser technology into a new Gigafactory would be a massive validation. It would instantly shift the narrative from speculative technology to industry standard. Secondary catalysts include expansion into new applications, like 3D printing of pure copper components, which is a holy grail for thermal management in high-performance computing and aerospace. If they can prove their technology is the best-in-class solution for this, it opens up an entirely new and lucrative market. Comment below what you think is the biggest hurdle for EV battery producers right now. Is it raw material sourcing or manufacturing efficiency? Conversely, the bear case is equally compelling and rooted in tangible risks. The number one risk is liquidity. 
New Burrow is burning cash, and if they are unable to secure major contracts before their current reserves are depleted, they will be forced to raise capital under duress. This would likely mean a highly dilutive offering at a low price, severely damaging existing shareholder value. The second major risk is competition. While New Burrow has a head start in high-power blue lasers, you can be certain that larger, better capitalized players in the industrial laser space are working on their own solutions. If a competitor with a massive sales and support network introduces a comparable or even good enough product, New Burrow could lose its first mover advantage. Finally, there's the risk of a prolonged economic downturn. In a recession, companies slash capital expenditures. The purchase of a new, innovative laser system would be one of the first things to be delayed, pushing out New Burrow's path to profitability even further. Investors who use robo-advisors like Schwab Intelligent Portfolios or manage their own Fidelity IRAs with a focus on stable, profitable companies would find these risks far too great to stomach. In conclusion, the story of New Burrow is a fascinating study in the market's frequent ability to reconcile groundbreaking technology with a difficult financial reality. The expectation, driven by the